Hey. Can you hear me? How are you? I'm good. How are you? Great. Good. Okay. You can hear me because it said that um, something was wrong with my speaker, but I can hear you and you can hear me. So hopefully it's all good. Yeah. Seems good. Seems good. I'm going to pull up the PowerPoint. Have it ready. Okay. Okay, we're already recording, right? I think so. Okay, so welcome. We are going to talk about Global Gateways at Stetson University. We'll keep an eye on the waiting room so we can let people in, hopefully, if, as they join. But also, if you have questions, you can either just ask them, type them in the chat, or wait till the end, and and we'll, we're happy to answer any kind of questions that you have about the program. My name is Paula Hentz. I am the director of our World Center here on campus. Um, so we work with all of our study abroad programs, international student and scholar services, campus internationalization, all of that. But one of the programs that we help operate and run is this Global Gateways program, which is this kind of cool, unique opportunity for first year students to study abroad in Dublin during their first year, which is actually really unique to be able to study abroad right away in your first year. And then Nancy is also here, Professor Nancy Barber, and she teaches on the Global Gateway Program. She will um, be with the students for the entirety of the semester. Um, so she's also here and can share a little bit about herself and about, um, about the program and what it's like being in Dublin and the classes that, that um, you would be taking as part of this program. So let me... Well, I'm clicking, but nothing's moving. So hopefully we'll <laughs> move in a second. Here we go. Okay. So the overview of Dublin, kind of like I mentioned, it is a unique opportunity. You get 16 credits, which is a normal Stetson load because we're on this unit system at Stetson. It's 16 credits a semester typically to stay on track towards graduation. Um, so if you do this program and you would know prior to even starting at Stetson, so that would mean your fall semester, you don't need to take a first year seminar because you would be taking it in the spring with Nancy. So um, you would have that opportunity to, to take something else in the fall instead and then save your FSEM for the spring. Everybody has to take an FSEM, it is required um, in order to graduate. So it is something that you need to take. Um, you would also take um, another gen ed requirement, which is an A course also taught by Nancy. And we'll get more into like the course details in a couple slides from now. Um, but. Um, but it's something that you would have to fulfill an A gen ed anyway. And so you can do that through this program. Um, you get to be with Nancy, who <laughs> is awesome and has done this program twice before. So knows Dublin very well and, um, and is just a huge amount of support and a great resource for you while you are in Dublin. Um, and then there's program excursions built in, which is awesome. So you're in class, but you're also getting to experience Ireland and Dublin, which it's, it's just really cool because it's, it's just different than being in the land, right? Um, so we work with a provider in Dublin called IES Abroad. They are a study abroad provider. They have a center in Dublin in an area called Rathmines, um, which is just a part of the Dublin. And it's near the city center. It's not too far at all. Um, and they're the host for the program. So these are some pictures of the center, the classrooms, um, some study spaces and hangout spaces within the center. Um, but they also are great because they have an on-site staff that's there to help with all of the logistics. They have someone who's there for student support and services. So if you're not feeling well and you're like, I need to see a doctor and I need to, um, you know, what are the best clinics? They have people that will help you figure that stuff out. They'll help you with the insurance aspects, like figuring all of that out. Um, if you just have questions about how to use the local transportation system, they are there, they're all locals. They are there to literally just help US students um, who are studying abroad in Ireland. So they're very well equipped to help and to um, just provide good services and support services um, while you're over there. They're also helping with all of those on-site activities that um, you get to do. So the different excursions um, and um, cultural activities and events that happen throughout the semester, they're helping with all of that. So yes, Nancy's there to help and be that kind of main sets and support, but there's a whole team of people in addition to Nancy that are there to kind of make sure that everyone is having a good, safe um, experience in Dublin. Um, so 
Nancy, it's here. Um, and Nancy, do you want to introduce yourself a little bit and just say a little bit about yourself and yeah, and yeah. what you I, like about Nancy. Yeah, I teach in the English department um, when I'm on campus, and um, this will be my third year uh, with the Dublin program, which I totally love. Um, I live in England part of the time. Uh, my partner Christopher's English, and so we live over here. I'm, I'm in England right now talking to you at uh, 10, 10, 10 at night. Um, and so, so I spend part of, part of my time in England, part of my time in Dublin, and part of my time in Florida. Um, and and Dublin might be my favorite of the <laughs> of the three. Um, it's a great place. It's super navigable, easy to get around. Um, the people are incredibly friendly, um, and uh, you know I I love it. The IES folks have been great. Um, the students really like them too. Um, they sort of smooth the way for all the sort of transitions that that happen when you go to live in a new uh, in a new country, um, and I get to go on all the excursions with you and and hang out and get to know you beyond the classroom. Uh, I teach two classes there. One's an FSM that everybody at Stetson takes. Um, mine is called the Spirit of Travel, and uh, it's basically all about. Um, it's all about the sort of transformation that happens through travel because people travel. Um, so we'll watch movies, we'll read books, we'll read stories, um, and and we'll write about them. And we'll talk about the sorts of openings that happen when people um, when people travel, and especially travel that's not entirely comfortable. Um, so that's the FSM. Uh, and uh, the other class is um, it called Introductory in, Introduction to Writing Literary Nonfiction, which is just a really um, big title for um, writing about travel writing. That's the that's the focus of it, and it's basically focused on all the sort of things that you are doing. So the excursions you're making, the travel you're doing on your own, those are the kinds of things that you'll be writing about. So. Um, at the end of the semester, you end up with sort of a, a portfolio of artifacts that that are all about your experience traveling while you were there. So those are the two courses I teach. You'll also teach. You'll also take two Irish study electives. Um, Paula, do you want to talk about those at all? Yeah. Or yeah. yeah. Um, so there's going to be a few options. We're still finalizing the course choices, but these are these are a kind of a sample of the types of classes you can expect you would pick two of them. So there's Celtic myth and legend in early Ireland. We've offered that before. We've always gotten really popular. Um, like it's a popular course. Our students have given us good feedback on that. Um, intro to Irish culture and society. That's another one that we've offered before. And also um, I think it's, it's nice for you to kind of have an understanding of where you are in the context of current events and what's going on and just kind of placing you in, in Ireland. So you can make more sense of what you're seeing and experiencing throughout the semester. Um, Northern Irish Troubles is another one that we're hoping to add this year. It's one of the ones that we're talking through with IES, but and you probably, you may have heard, right, of, of these, um, the troubles that they call them. And they really, it was until like the 90s before kind of peace came to Ireland between the Northern part of Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. And it really, really shaped a lot of the history and the culture and and how Ireland is today. And so it's a really good opportunity to learn about some of those troubles and what happened and how eventually peace came and how things are today. Um, and then the Irish culture through film um, is another kind of cool class. We have had students who have taken that one in the past too. And that is um, always popular. The Irish, the, the style of, you know, how they do the humor, all of it's a little bit different, but it's a really cool way to kind of learn about the culture through film. And so that's another option. Um, that we're hoping to have for you all. Again, the, this list might be tweaked a little bit, but this is kind of the idea. The idea really behind all of the classes that we offer in Ireland and through Global Gateways is that we want the we want your classes to use Dublin and Ireland as the classroom, right? So you're not just going and learning about something random in Ireland. You are actually you're you're learning about the place that you're in, right? So it, it all matters, and and even when you're not in class, it's all going to connect, and you're going to be learning throughout the entire semester. When you're doing the excursions, even when you're just out and about on your own and experiencing, you know, 
the city of Dublin in your free time. So it will it will all connect. It'll be good. Um, and yeah, it's it's a cool opportunity to be in Ireland. And the classes we've gotten really good feedback on them. They are interesting. Um, the two IES classes will be taught by IES um, professors, but they are actually all Irish and or live in Ireland. They are they're they're comfortable. They they are in Ireland. So you'll have kind of a good mix of both what to expect in like a Stetson course through Nancy's classes. And you'll have an idea of like Stetson American type classes, but you'll also get this opportunity to learn like what European classes are like and kind of a different structure almost in terms of what's expected and and um, like outside of class work, but you get the best of both worlds, I think through this program um, and through this, yeah, being able to take classes in both ways. Okay, so your room and board. It is um, apartment style and it is right in the heart of the city of Dublin. It's awesome location. You will be happy with the location. Um, it is, um, everybody has their own bedroom and everybody has their own ensuite bathroom as well. So, and your bedroom is lockable so you can lock it, keep your own stuff in there. And then you have common areas, which is a kitchen. The kitchen kind of has like a little dinette area, which also has like a, um, a TV, so you have a communal space to hang out with your flatmates. Um, typically six or seven bedrooms within the apartment, and then you have the kitchen that you're all sharing and cooking and, and hanging out together in, in those common spaces. Um, and the kitchen is big enough for all of you. There's typically at least two fridges, two stoves, um, all of that so that you know multiple people can be cooking at one time. Um, there's two possibilities of places where you could be living um, in Dublin, I have a feeling you're going to be at Beckett House, um, though it could be heyday. Um, but if it's Beckett House, it'll be about a 45 minute walk to the study center, which for a U.S. student seems like a lot, but for an Irish student is nothing. Um, there are, um, Dublin's very walkable. You can walk through the city. It's safe. It's easy to get through. It might take you a little time. So there is the option of taking the bus or the Lewis. The Lewis is their um, tram system throughout um, Dublin. Um, so, and then there's also a dart, but typically the students are taking to the, if they're getting themselves to class, they're typically taking the bus or the Lewis. Um, we do provide you with the bus pass to get you started. The bus pass is good for the buses, the Lewis and the dart. Um, and it's got 50 euros on it just to get you started with the student discount, 50 euros will get you pretty far. Um, and you can always top up throughout the semester if you use it all. But a lot of our students are walking, so you end up not needing it that much. But it really just depends. If you aren't into walking, then you might be wanting to budget more for your bus pass and your, your transportation card. Um, but it, it's all variable depending on you and and, um, and how much you like to walk. But I encourage walking because I think that you get to know the city so much better when you are walking around and exploring it. Um, there's no meal plan for this program. It's just not a thing over there, but you do have your own kitchen. There's plenty of grocery stores nearby. And honestly, groceries in Ireland are cheaper than groceries in the U.S., which is great. Um, they are cheaper. They're also fresher. You'll find it in, I think, in Europe that they don't use as many preservatives. And there are a lot of things that we're allowed to use in the U.S. in our food that is not allowed. It's illegal in the European Union. And so you'll you'll need to do more frequent shopping because your food won't last as long as it would here in the U.S. But I would say every three or four days, you're probably going to need to go to the store, pick up some food, do some meal prep. Um, if you are going to do this program, I think Nancy and I would both agree you should you should work on learning some cooking skills, at least some basic ones <laughs> to help you survive that semester. Um, but if you don't want to cook, there's plenty of affordable restaurants within walking distance. There's one student this past semester who I think Uber Eats all the time, <laughs> right? Like constantly ordering Uber Eats because he didn't want to cook. So uh, really, whatever works for you, there are options. Dublin's a big city, so you you can cook on your own. You can also order food. You can walk and get, you know, your own food at a restaurant. There's so many options um, within the city. Was, and yeah, Nancy. I was just going to say, there was also a student last year who um, taught cooking lessons to uh <laughs> a large portion of the rest of the kids too. So, um, oh so. my gosh, I I go over with all the students um at the beginning of the semester, and I just remember one of the students, um, his parents had packed all of these spices in his carry on, and we got stopped at um, at uh, uh, TSA because they wanted to check, and they had to test each spice. They were like poured it out to make sure it wasn't anything, you know, um, I don't know, illegal or problematic. But yes, um. 
cooking, cooking is definitely something that I think is, uh, you know, it's part of the experience and part of the growth I think that happens is learning how to kind of fend for yourself and cook and, and survive. So here are some pictures. This is all Beckett House, so you get an idea of what the accommodation looks like. The rooms are small, but they have everything you need and you're not sharing it with anyone, which is great, right? You've got your bed, you've got the desk to study, you've got um, that kind of thing right here. Back here is a uh, wardrobe so you can hang your clothes. And then right the mirror, right on this other side of the mirror is the door to the bathroom. And that's what this is. Again, small, but you're not sharing it. It's just for you. So it has everything you need. Um, and then this would be an example of a shared kitchen space. So you've got the two stoves right here. And then right next to where I'm taking the photo is are the two refrigerators. So plenty of space. Um, the couch is here with the little TV so you can all hang out. Um, I know one of the years they were all watching The Crown together, Netflix, kind of they would just hang out and and um and watch TV together um, in their free time. So some they also have larger community spaces because how this works um is it's it's housing, but it's not specifically just for IES students. It's for university students across all, all of Dublin. So really you could be in there with students who are attending Trinity or UCD or all these different schools around the city of Dublin, which is kind of cool because you get a chance to meet other university students and people from all over the world. Um, so I know last year too, they they talked to our students talked about how it was so cool living in the space because they made friends from all over Europe and Asia, like everywhere. They had friends from everywhere through their accommodation. Um, but this kind of gives you an idea of like general group hangout space. So this is for the entire building. There's a movie room. They have like a pool table and just hangout study spaces. I don't have pictures of it, but on the upper floors, there are actual like study rooms that are quiet that you can use to actually just study and reserve a room. Or if you want to do some group work, um, you can reserve one of those rooms for that. This picture up here, that's the rooftop, which is pretty cool. They sometimes will do barbecues and on a nice day, you can just kind of hang out there, study, just talk. Um, it's really close to Croke Park, um, which is where the Gaelic games are. So the Irish kind of Gaelic sports, um, but they also have really cool like performances, right? Like Taylor Swift was at Croke Park. Um, last year it was Garth Brooks. Garth Brooks took over. Um, I was there during that week and it was just wild how much Irish people love Garth Brooks. Um, but the cool thing about being in Beckett House though is that you could literally just stand on this roof and you can hear the concerts. Um, you are close enough to kind of be able to experience that. Um, <laughs> so yeah, if you like Garth Brooks, that would have been great. If you don't, maybe it would have been torture, but it's only for a few days. They usually limit the tour, the concerts to three days. Um, Garth was a, a special exception. I think he got, what, four or five days, but that was a special yes. rule because they really love Garth Brooks over there. Yeah. So um, some excursions that are built into the program. Um, a lot of them are built into the classes that you're going to take. And again, because you're learning about Ireland, everything connects. So all the stuff that you are doing, it will connect to your coursework in some way. Um, but these are some examples of things that our students have done in the past. Um, you've got the Dublin food trail. So this picture up here by the cheesemongers, that was uh, a stop on the food trail. Um, here you've got Causey Farm, which is kind of a cool opportunity to go. Um, our students go, they're at an actual farm, right? So they're getting to hang out with like chickens and um, like, like all these farm animals <laughs> and then like llamas. They had llamas, right? Um, and um, and uh, and then you learn how to make Irish soda bread. You do some Irish dancing while you're there. Um, you get to go jumping through bogs, <laughs> which is kind of fun um, and very Irish. So uh, it's kind of a cool experience to really get to know like Irish culture, but also not like the city culture, like more of like a farm, right? And more rural Ireland, which is kind of cool. Um, this picture up here, this is um, during just a day trip to Hope, um, which is a little seaside town really close to Dublin. You can get there on the train, the dart. Um, and it's just really lovely. They have a seal there that you can like feed. Um, and uh, and that's fun too. It's like a very large seal because it's, it's well loved by tourists. Um, and down here, you've got Dublin Castle. Um, so all kinds of things that you can see just in Dublin itself. Um, the Croke Park, and what I talked about before with the concerts, it's also where the GAA Museum is, the Gaelic uh, Games Association. There's usually a chance to do and experience some Gaelic games. Um, so you get to try to play them for yourselves and learn. It's actually really 
even for me as someone who's not like super into sports, I think it's fascinating, like getting to go to that museum and learn about like hurling and Irish football and all that stuff. It was fascinating. And I have like a whole new respect for it. It looks really hard, um, but you'll get to try it for yourself. Um, there's day trips to Glendalough, Newgrange, and the Hill of Tara, Tara, I think. But these places are older than Stonehenge. They're really historical. They're uh, they're amazing. And they're kind of cool opportunities to see and experience kind of this old historical roots of, of Ireland. And then there's a, a, a weekend trip built in as well. So this is three days, two nights to the west coast of Ireland. So that's going to be Galway, which is known for being kind of like, it, they have a university there. It's known as being like very student-friendly, young, hip, fun. Um, actually, Nicola Coughlin, if you all watch Dairy Girls or Bridgerton or any of those things, she's from Galway um, and uh, Western Ireland as well. So that that would be like the Cliffs of Moher and kind of those famous parts, really beautiful part of Ireland and a cool chance to go experience that through the program. All of these excursions are built in, so you don't have to pay extra for them, which is something that's really unique and I think special because um, you you could pay the same amount of money and be at Stetson and Deland and you won't get cool trips planned for you <laughs> to like the Cliffs of Moher um, and the Croke Park and all these things. Or you could go to Dublin, pay the same price and get to experience all of this. So it's um, it's really a cool opportunity and and one that you should take advantage of if, if you can, because it's, it's rare. Most schools that offer a first year abroad program are charging extra money for it and Stetson is not. So I think it's something that makes it a little bit more special and um, something you should do and take advantage of. So getting into the cost, um, the tuition is the same. So that $20,505, that is the tuition to come to Stetson for one semester. So you would pay that if you were in Deland, you would pay that if you were going to Dublin. Student life fees, the housing, all of that is the same as what we would charge you at Stetson for the same thing. So the housing, what we charge you for in Dublin is the equivalent of if you had your own private room in an apartment at Stetson. So because you have your own private room in an apartment in Dublin. So that's why the charge is what, what it is. Um, so these are, the only thing that you're paying to Stetson are these top three things, right? So you have your tuition, housing, and student life fees. All of your Stetson financial aid. So a lot of you probably have scholarships that have been offered to you by Stetson, maybe the Dean Scholarship, Presidential Scholarship, all these different awards. You can apply all of that to the Global Gateways program. So it's really a good deal. Um, the only thing that you do have to budget some extra things. So if you need the bus pass beyond the 50 euros that we're going to give you, which should last you about a month, um, then you'd want to budget a little bit more for that if you are not into walking. Um, if you need to get a passport, that would be something to budget. You do need a visa and that will cost you probably about 300 or so dollars. So that will be something that you do and you'll be given all this information on what documents you need to collect and gather and how to apply for the visa. And IES Abroad is really good about helping with that as well, but it is something you should budget for. Um, round trip airfare and then meals in Dublin. There's no meal plan. So instead of being charged a meal plan to Stetson like you would be for your fall semester if you live on campus, you won't have that charge in the spring. Instead, you would just take the money that you would have used up for the meal plan to buy groceries in Dublin. And then any kind of personal expenses. So this is really variable depending on how much you want to travel and how much you want to spend when you're in Ireland. So this is like an estimate, but really the reality is it could be a lot more or a lot less depending on how you are as um, how you want to live your life, really. So... Okay, so how does it all work? It will start in mid-January and end in late April. We don't have the exact dates yet because IES hasn't given them to us yet, but we know the approximate um, times. There will be an optional group flight from Orlando. Most students do take it. I typically go over with the group because like Nancy mentioned before, she is living in the UK. So she's coming from the UK and joining the group in Dublin. Um, I will go over with the group um, in um, from Orlando. And... Um, it is optional because we know not everyone's coming from Central Florida. Some people might be, you know, we had a student from New York, for example, who wanted to just join us from New York, right? Fine. That's totally fine, too. You can meet us in Dublin if that's easier for you. But for anyone that wants to go on a group flight together, we are arranging that. Um, there's going to be a mandatory pre-departure orientation that will happen here in Deland. The cool thing about having this in the spring is that you have a whole semester to kind of get to know each other. So we'll do a few kind of sessions throughout the fall semester so you all can meet each other. We can start talking about what to expect, what to pack, 
um, you know, what, what it's going to be like, the travel arrangements, all of that. So there'll be some time to get to know each other in the fall um, before actually showing up and arriving in Dublin. So how do you apply? Um, so at this point, um, hopefully you've already applied to Stetson. <laughs> you have to apply to Stetson and be accepted. There's a supplemental application for the Global Gateways Program, which you can get to through your Hatter portal, through the Premier Program section of the Global Gateways. Um, you'll find the Global Gateways application there. Um, it's a short essay. It does not need to be super long, okay? Just a short essay is fine, but just let us know, like, why do you want to do this program? Like, <laughs> what is interesting about Global Gateways? What characteristics would you display while you're representing Stetson? Because we want to make sure that you're going for the right reasons. Um, and then how does this fit into your personal and academic goals? Um, it doesn't, again, doesn't need to be super long, but we do want it to be written by you. So please don't stick this into a chat GPT or AI like generator. We can always tell, uh, like it's, it's usually pretty obvious when students do this. Um, and the reality is that I think I mean, answered you like for me, I personally, I prefer to read something that's genuine and from the heart, even if it's not perfect. I would much rather read an imperfect essay that's actually written by a student than something that looks perfect, but is completely heartless and written by AI. So I don't know, Nancy. We'd like to know a little bit about you. We'd like to know some specifics about you. That's, that's what we care about more than in anything. So those are hard to get from chat GPT. And Mary, I just saw your question. Am I able to attend as a transfer student slash junior since you are um, not a first year? Yes, we have had a transfer student who has um, done the program before. So it, it is possible. Just make sure that um, the classes that you need are going to be able to keep you on track to graduate and however long you're hoping to take to, to get out of Stetson. But yes, it is, it is a possibility for transfer students. Okay. Careers media. Okay. So to me, the question is how many, how much room do you have for electives? Because you aren't going to be able to take a communication and media studies. Potentially that film course could count as a, as a, an elective towards your major if they approve it that way. Um, but you'd need to have some room for some electives, I think, if you were going to do it. Um, but again, I, um, yeah. mm -hmm. I actually, uh, I don't have, I don't need any more general electives. Um, I have already covered that. Um, I graduated with my AA at Daytona State with high honors. I graduated through the uh, um, Quanta Honors. Mm -hmm. um, but anyways, my career is communications and media studies, but I really wanted to study abroad. That's really what I really want to do. Yeah. Um, but I just, I wasn't sure if I was able to, because I know um, the business, uh, the business, um, I guess, di di director or whatnot um, had told, I I'm not them, but like that area what could go overseas and, um, and study abroad. But I wasn't sure if there was other uh, departments like communications and media studies that could do that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can make study abroad work. And if this isn't the program, then you would still, I mean, look into this because I think it's a great program, but there's other options too, where you could potentially take comm courses um, through exchange um, partners. Um, and you would actually earn steps and credit. You could go whole, for a whole semester um, and stay on track to graduate. Yes, you should. Be yeah. Cause um, I was trying to graduate within the two years um, and I already spoke to my advisor and whatnot. He says, I don't need any general electives. I've already covered that. I have 64 credits. I just need um, to finish my credits. Um, but I would really just love to take classes in Ireland or, or even not even Ireland, just anywhere out of the country. It'd be, I thought that would so be cool. My recommendation to you, um, if you want to do this program, great apply, but then if, if this isn't the right program, then set up a meeting during your first semester on campus. We'll go through your degree audit. And we can actually look and see what classes you need to take and what, and then we can find programs abroad that will let you stay on track. Um, but, yeah, because I just, um, I just added a minor um, uh, with marketing because mm -hmm. I, just because I, my degree is so small, um, I needed to have additional classes, but because I've already done all of my general electives, I just needed additional classes. So that's why I added that. Um, minor in marketing to fill those spaces. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, common media and marketing, they go well together, I think. So I think that'll be, um, that'll be okay. But then there's plenty of classes too, where you can take business classes, but 
but we could also do calm. You can also do calm. So there are options for you for sure to study abroad. Yeah. You can also okay, do, perfect. You can also change your minor to creative writing, mm -hmm. and then you could probably get all. You could probably get four of your five creative writing courses done in Dublin. Just just an idea. Yeah. There you go. Alrighty. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Okay. So other things then. Um, rolling admissions so apply soon um and you have to be 18 years old by the time the program starts that is important because the housing in ireland does not let you live there um unless you are 18 years old so um yes you must be 18 by then um any questions so that's the end of this part but i am we are here to answer any questions that you have <laughs> Is there um, other countries that um, are available? Because I know I I've seen a couple of lists, but I don't know if there are um, other countries that you can do study abroad in. Yes, I will send you the list of exchange programs, but I will tell you that you cannot do them in your first year at Stetson. So even as a transfer student, like if you want to go as a first year student, it's going to have to be for a whole semester. It's going to have to be Dublin. Um, you could potentially do a short term program in your first year, like um, like a spring break or a summer after your first year, but the semester programs, you have to wait until your second year, um, except for Dublin. Dublin's the one exception. It, oh, okay. And then, um, so I would have to get my first year done in order to do um, studying abroad in another country, but if I could, I could probably go my first year this year, or at least in spring to Ireland. Yes, exactly. So if you want to go for a whole semester in your first year, then Dublin, Dublin's it, right? Um, but if you're going to do, if you're willing to wait till your second year, and for anyone else that's in the group, third year, whatever it might be, um, then you could do an exchange program. Um, so yeah, because I was, chat, um, oh, the link in the I chat is all of our about, exchange program. Oh, okay. Thank you. I was thinking mm -hmm. about the, the only reason why I asked like other countries was um, England look looked really um, appealing just because I my my dad has some friends in England so I already know a couple of people in England so um, if I did need help or anything I have my limey friends over there to help me mm -hmm. so that's kind of why um, I thought about um, just maybe doing England but I could definitely do that my second year if at all possible if it goes with my program yes I would say if you are going to go, though, and do an exchange program, still come and talk with me in your first semester. Um, the earlier you plan, and this is for all of you, even if you don't do this program, I want you to study abroad, okay? Like, studying abroad is one of the best things that you <laughs> will ever do, I promise. Um, and so, um, but the earlier you plan it, so if you start planning it as a first-year student, even if you don't do this program, I would love for you to do Global Anyways, and I think it's an amazing program, and I'll get into that in a second, but like, but if you aren't going to do it, still study abroad, still see me early, come see our office, our, we're worlds, right? The world center on campus. Um, and um, and we can talk a little bit more about what you need to do, what classes are available abroad um, and what the best fit is gonna be for you academically. Um, we can go through your um, degree audit at that point, all of that. So um, definitely the earlier you plan, the better. Um, but I will say- Thank you. Yeah, but Global Gateways for a first-year student, in my opinion, is one of the best ways to do it. And honestly, a lot of the students who have gone are studying abroad again. So, for example, in the fall, we have two of the students who studied abroad at Global Gateways the first year that we ran it, two years ago. They are, we have two more students who are studying abroad for a whole other semester this upcoming fall, right? Um, we had a student who just studied abroad this past, um, like this year, this past fall. He, was, he studied abroad, and now... He just did two more study abroad programs this summer. So uh, there's a there there are oppor opportunities. I think the cool thing about doing Global Gateways is that you can do study abroad early, but you're not limited to only doing it then. Like if you really love it, you can go abroad again because you've done it early. You have time to do it again. And to me, Global Gateways, what's cool about it too is that it's because of how it's built, like you have Nancy there, right? You have a Stetson professor there. You have a ton of support while you're there. So it's a really great way to have your first kind of extended period abroad without your family, right? Um, in a really supportive, safe like environment where you have just people to help you through every single step of it, so that you're more prepared later. Because if you decide to do an exchange program later, it is, it's amazing, it's, it's wonderful, but it's gonna require a lot more independence than the Global Gateways program. Because if you do an exchange program, you are essentially 
you're, you're an international student at another school. And so you are dropped into that other school. They have an orientation for you. There's an international office there that's going to be there to help you. But for the most part, you're just living your life and going to class and doing your own thing without a lot of people like they're helping you unless you ask for help, right? Um, versus Global Gateways, where I think if, as a first year student, it's set up for you to make your life as easy as possible in another country. So it's a good first step that you can then use. And then you're ready, I think, to go and do that more independent experience later. So, yeah. Yeah, it definitely, it definitely sounds like a good program. And honestly, um, you know, I have been kind of wanting to leave the United States, like get an excuse to leave the United States. And um, if I can uh, visit a bunch of countries, that would be really great just so I can see what countries I like. Um, Because I would like to eventually like, move out of the country and live somewhere. I was thinking maybe the Netherlands or something, maybe the Nordic countries, just because I think they're really cool. But yeah, I think it'd give me that experience to like get me out, see the places, see if I like them, if I like the culture. Because like you said, it's not just about, you know, learning and getting your education, but it's about learning the atmosphere and the culture there. And I think that's, mm -hmm. I think that's wonderful. And I think that's great. And it's going to help someone like me who wants to leave the country and, and, and try out things. Yeah. I think that once you leave, it's like, you almost catch a bug, right? You have to travel more. <laughs> so, Like you just got to keep, you just got to keep going and finding ways to do that. But I do think that like having those experiences is really foundational so like I remember the first time like I went to England right and I figured out how to use the tube by myself right the metro system and that moment of like oh my god I get it and now I can go any city to any city in the world right and I can figure out there's their metro map and I can navigate any metro system because I've done one right and so I think that's kind of what happens when you have these experiences it becomes less scary figuring out a bus system isn't as scary figuring out the tube system isn't as scary um, trying to figure out like where am I going to eat what am I going to do like because you've done it now and you kind of have this experience it you are just better equipped and more independent and confident in your own abilities um to to do all of this stuff i think and to navigate your way in the world so i think it is it's a it's a good way to do it to me this is like an awesome first step it's ireland they speak english you are with that's in you know support and ies support um and it's it's the perfect kind of transition to get you to get you to kind of have that independence and experience it's yeah awesome. thank you so much yeah. The the Dublin airport is super easy to get to and Dublin will get you to any place you want to go and there're lots of cheap flights so yeah. you can Yeah, actually right direct there. flights from Dublin to Amsterdam and Dublin to London and yes, yeah, all over. I have uh I've actually visited Dublin once. I've been to the UK before, so I've been to Scotland, Ireland and Wales just because my dad had taken me on a trip awesome. uh, to see the limey friends and got to see mm -hmm. all the amazing cool stuff. Um we we were supposed to go see Dublin, Ireland. Unfortunately, our our uh, plane got delayed really bad, so we didn't end up leaving. But I did actually go to the airport, and it, it was really nice. Um, but yeah, I would definitely love to explore Dublin, Ireland, because that was one of the countries that I did not get to see at all. Dublin is great. Right? It's so friendly. People are so nice. <laughs> They're so nice. I just think it's a really welcoming, kind, like, it's just a great kind of place where I think, like, I feel very comfortable sending students there and, and feeling like you're going to have a good, safe, enjoyable experience and people are going to watch out for you and take care of you. Um, it's, it's a good, it's a good place. Yeah. It's the kind of place if you look a little bit lost at a bus stop, like, you know, somebody will just come over to you and ask you where you're trying to get to. You know, yeah. you, don't, you don't even have to ask necessarily. Yeah. It's happened, happened so many, many times, times to me. <laughs> same, same. Yeah, people are just kind. I I love that. I love hearing about that. Just because I I I had such a good time going, um, you know, across the country. It was great, and you know, anytime like I was with the Limey friends, they're you know they're hilarious. They're like I want to go to the bar with these people because they're they're hilarious. But um. Yeah, I, I'm glad that um, you told me about this stuff because this this is making me more excited because I've already talked to my mom. She's like, I want you to do this. I don't care how much it is. I, I want you to do this. So, so my mom wants me to do this opportunity. So um, I, I most likely you'll, you'll be seeing and hearing from me. Yay, that's wonderful. I think, um, yeah, just fill out the application. Um, and it, it like, yes, I, I saw that Gabrielle asked that question. It is rolling. So the sooner the better. Um, but our hope is to be able to have a final class, like by the time classes start in August, um, so that we can actually start 
preparing and, and getting the group together throughout the fall. Um, and so you all. So could you um could you help me direct me to where I need to go to apply? Yeah. Um, and do I don't have essay? access to Hatter Portal, but do you know how to get into your Hatter Portal? Yep, I'm already in it right now. Okay. Do you see a section that says Premier Programs? Premier. Let me look it up. Premier. Um. Let me see. I see study abroad, but I don't see premier programs. Mm. Try study abroad then. Premier programs is what, um, and if not, we'll ask Marcus Daniel um, because he's um, the main person from admissions who's working with this okay. program. I'm in the, yeah, I'm in this, um, I'm in the study abroad, and it brings me to the Stetson University Central International Learning page. Okay, so there's um, nothing within your Hatter Portal. Oh, apply now. Apply now. Does it say Global Gateway? It it says Central or Center. Sorry, uh, Center for International Learning. Um, doesn't say anything about. I'm looking. I wish I could show. I could. Yeah. show you my screen the problem um, is that so like this is um so nancy and i don't have access to what you can see um through the hatter portal but the information that we've been given is that there's a premier program section of your hatter portal so like wherever you apply to to stetson um the application so it wouldn't be your my stetson this would be like your Hatter. So do you have like a Hatter portal where you logged in and you create an app? Oh, I, I thought it was my.stetson. What's no. the other one? Where did, well, how did you apply to Stetson? Did you have like a, um, a website that you use to log in and create your Stetson application? I don't believe, I don't, I don't, I honestly can't remember if I'm being honest, Um, but I did because I, it was a little bit different because I had to send it, I had to send an email to, I think it was Mick. Oh, I can't remember her last name. I think it's like Caroline or I, I don't remember because it was like from the Quanta Honors. So I had to send, I had to email it to her because I was like two days before the deadline and I changed my mind. I was like, I, I want to, you know, uh, send an application yeah. to Stetson. So I'm not sure if I did or didn't make one. Okay. Do you want to, Um, you can send, can you send me your email address? You can either send it For to sure. or or in, you can direct if you don't want it through the whole group i'm gonna but... i'm gonna put it in the chat okay does perfect. that work for you that works for me so we'll follow up and see what's going on um okay because that's um it's through admission so okay are others able to access it the application maybe yes, yes. i think okay. you'd be able to access it yes. okay perfect and were you able to get there through Premier Programs? Is that how it worked for you all? I actually um, clicked on the link oh. that was sent on the chat. Okay. And and you found Global Gateways? Right now, yeah. I found the one that says Global Gateway Spring 2025, and it has all the info that you have shared with us. Okay, good. And there's a link to the application? But I'm still looking for the link, actually. Yeah, that's... So we've asked... The, the instructions that I was given was through your Premier programs, but if you're not seeing it, then we need to fix that. So... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes but if you why don't if we just let everybody who signed up for after you yeah. talk to marcus daniel yeah send yeah, yeah. we'll them. we'll follow up with admissions and make sure that they that a link goes out to all of you with um with the the information on how to apply okay yeah. thank you yeah thank you and if you don't hear anything within the next week please email um, and let me know. Um, so here, the easiest thing to do is world.stetson.edu. Um, that should be easy to remember. And you can send a message there. And and so if you haven't heard anything from admissions from that link, that automated message, then just we'll follow up again. But we'll do that today uh, after the webinar to make sure that the information goes out. But um, but we'll nudge next week if, if you haven't heard. Okay.
Thank you very much. And I've also put my, my email on there in case you have any questions. Yeah. Up to later. Um, yeah. Any other questions about the program? From my part, I'm all set. <laughs> okay, good. It's really a cool right. program. I hope you all are able to do it. It's it's special and it's unique and it's just Dublin's awesome. So yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, so thank you. I appreciate your time. Thank you. And feel free to reach out if you do have other questions about the program. Um if, at any point. All right. Perfect. Okay. okay. Thank you. Have thank a you. nice evening. Thank you, you too. Thank you. Have a Bye -bye. good day. Bye, everyone.